think we're joined now by the Conservative MP, Jonathan Gullis. Uh, very good afternoon to you, uh, Jonathan. Let's start, if we can, first of all, with the Labour leader's speech this morning. Interestingly, of course, Labour ahead in the polls. Very difficult start to the year for Boris Johnson. I think there was a poll out today suggesting uh, that in nine out of ten areas on things like the economy, immigration, on Brexit, the government is way behind in terms of uh, support. Only on vaccines are there in the uh, lead. Is this simply a mid-term wobble or, or something for the Prime Minister, and indeed for you Conservatives, to worry about? Well... First of all, lovely to speak to you, Darren. And uh, with Captain Hindsight and his little gimmick, uh, let's not forget that this is the guy who wanted a second referendum, who wanted to drag us back into the EU, who suddenly now found his patriotism. And the fact he even needs to explain he's a patriot, I think is something that he needs to have a look in the mirror at. You shouldn't have to explain why you believe and love your country. It should just be automatically there. And with regards to Labour, you know, we had 70 years of Labour in Stoke-on-Trent, North, Kidsgrove and Talk. Nothing happened. In fact, the Labour Party have only just found Stoke again after they lost it because Google Maps exists and they can find it by searching it. Whereas in it's a Conservative government under Boris Johnson's leadership that's given 56 million for the levelling up fund, 29 million for transforming cities fund, 550 home office jobs and a 17.6 million town deal for Kids Grove, which means a sports centre closed by Labour because they couldn't be bothered to spend a pound to save it will now be refurbished and reopened in spring 2022. Uh, I mean, you say all that, but... but... And, and it's not surprising that you, you, you know, you're attacking Labour, being in government, of course, they in opposition. That's what happens in, in politics. But at the end of the day, Keir Starmer's argument about particularly patriotism is one based on pointing out flaws, that it, it, it's entirely, in fact, more than entirely possible. It's the right thing to do that if you love your country to point out some of those flaws. That's the role of the opposition. And in effect, he seems to be doing a better job than your leader at the moment. I think Captain Hindsight has been on so many different sides of different fences. B&Q must have run out by now with the amount he must be purchasing because that man's position moves on so many different angles. I mean, you've only got to look at education. He is absolutely, you know, and look, even when we opened up the economy on the 19th of July 2021, he was asking us to remain locked down. On schools, he remained silent because the Not Education Union have him in the back pocket and he's just following their lead. And then you see many other positions, like I say, on Brexit. Suddenly he wants to make Brexit work, yet despite the fact he wanted to drag us back into the EU, and have a second referendum. So the last person I'm going to take lectures from is Captain Hindsight. And I think that people in Stoke-on-Trent, North Kids, Grove and Talk, yes, they're not overly uh, enamoured by us in some regards at the moment. Being in government during a global pandemic is not easy. Trying to deliver on key pledges like levelling up is a challenge, of course it is. But I think that people will see in the years ahead, as this pandemic comes an endemic, uh, that they will see that uh, we are the party delivering we're already seeing in Stoke-on-Trent North over 140 brand new police officers on the beat. We've got a fantastic new chief constable who's going to tackle crime in our local area, particularly county lines. We've obviously, as I say, got that funding. Now we need to deliver on those projects. And in Stoke-on-Trent City Council, you've got Council Abbey Brown, who's delivering 1,000 plus homes a year, 97% on Brownfield. We were first for jobs growth in 2020. We are predicted to potentially be the sixth fastest growing economy in England, which includes London. For a city that is as mighty as Stoke-on-Trent, but had decades of labour neglect, it shows that we're very much a city on the up. OK, uh, and of course, voters will decide that in a couple of years' time. Let's move back to today, though, and the virus, uh, particularly with schools, facing a really difficult couple of weeks ahead. Your suggestion, I think, that you think fast masks sorry, are a price worth uh, paying, but you show the concern of teachers that actually, you know, this is going to be a very, very difficult start to the year. Of course, it's going to be a difficult start to the year. And look, my own partner is a, is a, a head of RE at a secondary school. She contracted uh, a positive COVID lateral flow and then a positive PCR back on the 27th of December. She's had her day six uh, lateral flow test. Thankfully, it's come back negative. So she's missed the first day of term, which was a training day. And as long as it comes back negative tomorrow morning, she'll be able to get back in front of the classroom where she wants to be. So I'm seeing that impact in my own household and fully aware that there is obviously going to be challenges in the profession I think, are ready for that. Uh, the government did hand out over 28 million tests the week commencing the 6th and 13th of December uh, to schools, as well as did a record-breaking, uh, re, uh, uh, fulfilled record number of uh, orders to help with where there were low stocks and had those delivered. So we know that the tests are there. We know that over 50% of 12 to 15-year-olds have had their, at least their first dose. We know that teachers obviously have been coming for getting their first, second and booster dose as well. And obviously the face mask is just a, another way to help mitigate the transmission, to help not impact. Uh, and obviously then finally got the teach army, 
where we were asking ex-teachers, someone like myself who spent eight and a half years in secondary schools, to come out and offer our services. And I volunteered in Stoke-on-Trent, North Kids, Grevin Talk, to use my Fridays, constituency days, to be in the classroom and help plug the gaps where I can. OK, Jonathan, appreciate your time. Happy New Year to you. And that's Jonathan Cullis there. And you too, Doug. And P4 Stoke uh, joining us. Well, let's...